What is going on everyone? Welcome to part two of me training and hiring a sourcing virtual system for your Amazon FBA business um, here in the UK. So let's dive into it. So in the last video, I ended up saying, and if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. It's part one of this series. It will be the, 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 the last video behind. So we talked about the process of putting your ad on onlinejobs.ph uh, and then filtering the applicants down. And that's what I've been doing in this process, okay? I've been filtering the applicants down um, to then find out who I wanted to interview. So in the last few days, in the last week, I have interviewed about eight or nine people and these people were my final applicants. Now, usually I don't want to interview that many people, but they all were quite credible in their um, in, in their training they've had previously according to their CV they sent me uh, and the answers so I did actually go ahead and interview about seven or eight people now some of them were instant rejects simply because of either experience re rejects for from my point of view in terms of bringing them onto the business um, because they were inexperienced in the role or they just simply I didn't feel they were going to be up to the job we didn't connect on a on a sort of level so the next stage I took, which you would also need to take if you're going to be hiring a sourcing VA, is interviewing your, your candidates. And that's sort of where I left the last video. So once you've filtered down in the different email folders, so phase one, phase two, phase three, okay, you've then you got your phase three and you should have about, I don't know, maybe between four to eight applicants that you want to interview rather than wasting your time. You know, as they answer the questions, some of them are more credible than others. Some of them won't answer the questions you need them to. Some, maybe you don't like the answers they've put to your previous emails. So once they've answered the pre real official face-to-face -face interview questions which are also part of the interview process the hiring process uh, then you should be left with about five to eight people perhaps from say 35 applicants that originally went into the the, the post and this is how it's worked for me um, so obviously then you want to be asking them questions you want to be asking them you know do they fit into your business because I struggled in the past probably hiring people inexperienced. Uh, I just hired a sourcing VA from this process and I'm about to hire another sourcing VA uh, tomorrow. Tell them the good news, which is a bit tricky at the moment picking between which ones to hire because I've got a couple of very credible candidates that have already got previous training. So the, the questions I asked myself were, do they fit into either my long-term vision of where I want them to be in the company, which is very important, or, and, or, okay, ideally you want both of these, but, or, do they have loads of experience in the actual um, job role that you want them to do? Because in my head, I think to myself, look, they're either going to stay as a sourcing VA and work their way up just as a sourcing VA, and that'd be really good, because that's a vital part of the business. It's the bloodline of the business. It's the fuel of the business, if you like. Or do I want one of them to work their way up in the company to become a purchasing manager, which in my case I do. So I'm looking at it from the angle of one of them needs to stay as a sourcing VA and ultimately maybe be in charge of that sourcing team to help me hire other sourcing VAs in the future. One of them I need to see the future potential in them to stay long term to work their way up in the business as my purchasing manager. So that's what I looked for anyway. And that's where I've been sort of you know, using my part intuition, but also um, do they have the skills? Do I think they're going to be loyal enough to grow the company? Can I trust them with my credit or debit cards in the future? These are big, big things. Um, so that's sort of what I took into place when I was hiring them. So anyway, once you've done that, once you've decided to hire one, just like I did, I then went on to give them uh, my welcome manual. Now, I created my own welcome manual for sourcing VAs. And within that manual, it's a step-by-step. -step. You've got to make it, they're not stupid at all, but you've got to make it idiot-proof, okay? Now, not saying they're idiots, because they're definitely not, but you've got to make it idiot-proof. The, the, the less idiot, the more idiot-proof you make your welcome manual, you don't have to wait one, by the way, but I would recommend this, the less questions you're going to get from them being confused all over the place and ultimately maybe not thinking this is the job for you if they're too confused all the time. So for me, it's clear communication. I say, right, this is the welcome manual. I spent a few hours creating a welcome manual. And within that welcome manual, 
I ping it over with the contracts when they first start and they can simply step by step read how they can gain access to the tools, the source, uh, the, the software and all the Google drives, etc. They're going to need to actually do their job. So I have got, let's for example, let's say um, this is your company email. One of the first ones, okay? Um, this is your company email. Um, this is the password for the email address and give them that, okay? This is what I do. Um, set them up their own company email because uh, they're going to need that as a source in VA to get all the promotions and stuff. Uh, the next thing I'll do is say this is the password to Bybot Pro or whatever software uh, you're using for the analyzing because they're going to need that. Um, you're going to have to explain to them how to get into your Slack communication channel if you do that and just put links in there. So it's it's you want to make a, the onboarding process really simple and that's what I did, right? So obviously once you've done that, you're going to have to connect them up to your Seller Central and all that stuff so they've got access in that, you know, whatever. Um, once that's all done, then they're sort of onboarded officially, um, contract signed, terms, uh, you know, um, terms of service sign, all that sort of stuff, right? Once that's all signed, once that's all set up, then obviously it's just onto the training phase. And for me, I put my VAs into between, I want them to work between 5.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. within that hours, right? But the job is actually they're gonna have, although I want them to be available between them hours, their aim is to, they're not gonna do it straight away, but to get eight to 10 deals a day, ideally 10, right, once they're better. Now that's the aim and that should always be the aim. Although that may not be achievable from the start, that's the aim that I've given them from the start. So a couple of months down the line, if they start doing that and providing you your deals by 10 a.m. as a deadline every day, even if it only takes them an hour between nine and 10, the better they get, the less they have to work. And that's quite a nice incentive because obviously you're gonna be increasing their pay as they go as well, et cetera. Um, so that's what I've incentivized them with. Um, I understand depending on their experience that you know that I'm just going to have to be with them quite a lot to start with just to give them tips and guidance and every day they give me the deals on my deal sheet right which they can put because I've got my own deal spreadsheet which they put on which I have access to so I can see I then review deals and have a little note section of reviewing them each day and their first task at the beginning of the, when they start work each day is to review my comments so I'm going to leave them feedback and study the deals which they leave each day so that they have feedback we then do a, a weekly phone call right I've got one tomorrow morning with my VA at 8.30 a.m okay you can do whatever time you want 8 a.m 8.30 a.m and then I can start feeding feedback. Now, within the first, say, four weeks, I'm probably gonna do a call twice or three times a week, just so that I can, you know, really give some good tips and advice uh, to my sourcing VA, okay? Both of them. And that's what I would recommend at this stage. It's just refining, this is what I'm doing, it's just refining, making sure they're better and better and better and better. And it does take time, but once they're good, if you've picked the right loyal VA, like I hope I have with one of them, they're gonna, they're gonna become a really, really valuable member of the team. So that's the phase two, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm literally just hot, I've taken them on board, I've studied them, made sure that they're good enough for my business, made sure that they're loyal, that I think they're gonna stay loyal to me, because otherwise you're putting your time and energy into a person that maybe leaves in two weeks or a month. It's just, it's, it's a drain of your energy and it's not worth it. So um, I've made sure I, as one of my main things that they seem loyal to me and they seem like they're actually gonna last. Because um, I've had VAs in the past where they've all left in two weeks or a month, you know, um, for various reasons. Um, I like to think it wasn't to do with me, although you've got to take some of the blame. Uh, the virus hit at some points and one of them had issues with their eyes and, you know, weren't right for the job. But you learn as these things go on, you know, and you're probably gonna get some VAs that aren't right for you and they leave and that's gonna be frustrating, but, Taking that under the belt and learning from that is exactly what I've done to bring forward into the, the other VA so that I can essentially be a better boss for them. Um, so that's, that's the one takeaway I got. Just pick someone that's actually going to be loyal to you so that it's not a waste of your time. You actually put in a lot of your time in the early stages into training them to making them good. So I hope that video has helped and I will see you in the uh, next video.